Hello kids and fans of Mad Ideas. I'm actually going to do this for both channels because I want you to see that there is a real life to any normal human being. And this is also a video for those of you who own the 2002 Caravan and want to change your brakes. Now, first thing we do is you assemble parts. You're going to want a flathead screwdriver. Trust me, you always need one. It'll make sense probably. Ratchet. 12 millimeters, metric, 12 millimeters. Uh, long handle is going to be a must. Rubber mallet may come in handy. At the very least, kids come over. Oh, sorry. No. Don't hit kids with the mallet. C clamp. This one here is a, should be a six if I can find it, just to make sure. Um, six or larger, though. You'll want a large C clamp. Believe me, you'll see why in a couple moments. A flat piece of wood, it's um, probably about an inch thick. Again, you'll see why. Proper brake pads. Now, if you have the 2002 Sport Caravan and you go get yourself some Durasteel brake pads, there's probably a number here, part number B378. But make sure you have the right ones because you'll have to have a friend nearby to send out to get you the proper ones. First thing you do before we do anything now, let's get on to this here. Your tires, you need to loosen the lug nuts before you get the tires jacked up. See, I already took, took them off but I started the loosening when the tire was still on the ground because you don't want to torque the thing when it's on your jacks. Next thing is jacks. If you notice, I have a jack stand as well as a floor jack. Why? Well, in this case, our floor jack loses pressure and goes down. However, I would do that back in Illinois when I had a more stable floor jack because of the th idea that more protection when your head is under the tire is a good thing. So let's get this tire off and get moving on it. Now I gotta tell you, I don't know the parts. By the way, did you notice that you actually bolt the hub cap on this thing? This is weird to me. This may be use, usual to you, but I've never had a car where I bolted the hub cap on. However, it does prevent them from flying off. We remove our tire. And I will set that aside. I usually lay it flat so we don't have any issues. And here is our brake. Clunk. Now, first thing you want to do is make sure there are no real grooves in this here. I believe this is called a rotor. Um, there's some scratching, but no grooves, so we're good. So it looks like I can proceed with the repair without anything. Now, next thing I want to show you, my rotor is actually held in by the brakes assembly. It's kind of bizarre to me, so I'm not sure how that came to pass. Back here is where we have our number 10s. Or number 12s, sorry. Number 12 metrics. And then there's one down here. We want to remove that and loosen that one and I will get on to that right now and I'll show you the result. Now let me just talk through this. I don't know. Let me think about that briefly. Because I could tell you about the topics of my other channels. Like for instance if you're watching Mad Ideas and have watched it before you'll go, why is my wall better? Well keep in mind Vlad the Impaler was the inspiration for my wall. You're thinking, what kind of crazy person are you? Well, watch the channel, find out. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. This is where a rubber mallet sometimes handy, but not necessary, because usually you can just work it in. So yeah, we're talking stakes and everything else. Okay, did I get it? Okay, lefty loosey, righty tidy, except when you're working in reverse, so this should ah, come apart. Mm. That's a nice feel in there, getting that hand caught <laughs> between the pieces of metal. <laughs> Let's see. Of 
course, no bruises. No, no one will believe it. Probably didn't even see it well enough. Yeah, my video game channel is a little more simple of a concept. A lot of times it's just me playing games. I do have strategy videos. Um, my strategies tend to work well as a big chess player. I may actually make chess videos at some point. Kind of a how-to, not for you're going to beat Gary Kasparov, but more for like um, you might beat your uncle. And I'm putting that as a might. Uh, a lot of the things I do is I don't have an opportunity to specialize. So this rotor here, I can't even think of what this is called. Maybe this is the rotor. I don't know. I'm just used to doing things, not getting a name. By the way, I always keep your pieces, like say this little 12 millimeter bolt, in your box. That way they don't roll away or get lost. I used to keep them in my hubcap, but on this car I can't do that because of the fact my hubcap is uh, so attached to everything else. If you look at this thing and you're thinking, wow, what a rusty piece of garbage. Because if you notice, aside from getting oil all over my hands, um, it is. It is entirely so damn rusty. This is why you don't buy your used cars from Illinois if you can help it. That is our brake pad. It's not down to metal yet, but holy cow, it's darn close. There are these clips too, and you want to keep these clips because these clips go into right here. Make sure you have them on correctly. The springy end is the end that is outside. The inside end stays inside because the springy end sticks out. It would protrude and drag on the rotor and screw it up. Now, if you know any people who collect metal, you might want to give them these. Holy cow. Yeah, that one got to metal. Yeah, it broke a chunk off. That's why. All right. I heard this dead metal scraping sound, and now I know where it's from. Let me take a look. I am checking the back rotor for any uh, massive damage. They are a bit grooved, but... Just a bit, so I'm going to keep them the same. Hopefully I won't pay for that down the road. Let's see if I can do this without having the same drop on my foot. Now there's a couple of things in here I didn't notice about these brakes, and maybe it's changed since... Of course, lighting. There we go. Try to put my hand where I want it to go. Right there, the attachment piece that I took the bolt off. It actually has a little uh, compression thing in it. I'm going to have to compress it before I put this back on. The reasoning is the brakes take up a certain amount of space. More so than the old brakes do because they have their pads. I may show you the comparison on that in a moment here. I remember to do that after this, of course. Now, there's another reason, I guess, why I'm doing this. Most of you guys out there are not going to grow into the kid who does the $3 million win on Fortnite. Many of you are probably going to remain better at me than Fortnite. Hey, I get math, I get strategy, you guys get Fortnite. That's okay by me. However... This job is going to be $32 for the brakes. <clears throat> Probably should have thought of that the first time. I put the bolt back in to hold it in place. I'm going to take it out again in a moment. But yeah, and this repair pretty much is the same thing for probably many Dodge Caravans in a wide range of years. But, you know, here's my thought. One of the reasons why I try and teach my kids this stuff normally is that, why are you going to grow up to be a wuss? I mean, boy or girl, you don't want to be a big sissy that's completely reliant on everyone else for everything in your life, I hope. 
Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe I can... Well, girls don't do this kind of stuff. If I had a daughter, I'd probably be more hard on her ass about getting this stuff done than a guy. As I only have boys, this is only speculation, of course. As a matter of fact, if my wife weren't working, I would be out here showing her how to do this stuff. I have in the past. You're thinking, what the hell kind of family have you got? Well, one that has a wife that's fortunately interested in this kind of stuff, too. She's helped me change out gear shift cables and brakes and repair hoods and all sorts of other odds and ends in the automotive industries. Uh, throws my way. So the next part is two parts. One, this. I'm going to have to pull back so you can actually see this while we're doing it. I'll try to keep my ugly mug out of the picture here. Because what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to have to pull this back in a second. I'm going to take a, come on now, there we go, take a board to the C-clamp, and this right here is a piston, and I am going to compress it. Now, strangely, I haven't done a brake job in like 20 some odd years, maybe 30 now, and I'm fortunate that my father-in-law helped me do the other side. You always do your brakes in pairs, and you should if you can't afford to do all of your brakes, get the front ones, unless if for some reason your back ones are literally smoking, because of the fact that they take about 75% of what you need done, done. Let's see if I can compress some of this by hand. <sighs> More likely to snap the board from the feel of it, so we won't go there. Sometimes I can get away with that, sometimes I can't. And this is where our friend, the rubber mail, it's probably going to come in very handy. Yeah, okay, I guess I got a little bit done. But since I bought the mallet, why not use it? Monkeys like tools. Yeah. Check that out. Bitches! Is this the only automotive video you've seen with the word bitches used in it? <laughs> I am referring to the parts. Yeah. Is there my bitches now? Mm. Now, if you've got wimpy hamster hands, this is going to be hard. You want a lot of compression on this. But you don't want to break the thing, which is a real difficult thing to do. You're trying to push it back because this piece is going to have to fit over where you have the brake pads, right? These spring in. These are a pain in the butt. At least I thought so. But make sure you get them right side up. And also, make sure you get the piece with the little springy clip. Do, 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 do as your outside piece. Okay, why is the springy clip on the downside on this one? Hmm. Oh yeah, because this assembly is actually upside down from the other one, so that's a thought to consider, by the way. It's not going to look exactly the same. It's pretty close, but not exactly. I'm thinking, what kind of idiot makes these things? Oh, by the way, I gotta show you this on the thought video see. Did you notice that? That was my rotor moving. Every other car I've had the rotors attached somehow in some weird way. Why this isn't, I don't know. Probably weight saving. It doesn't need it. But it's still kind of weird if you're used to having your rotor being attached. Like, what are you doing to my car, man? What are you doing? <laughs> you're screwing me up here. Okay. So that's one. This is the hard one. This is probably the one I may have to pause to get in. Hopefully I can just do it this way. Oh, man. I don't look like a pro if I do this right. But I won't. <laughs> okay. You know, they time lapse a lot of this stuff. And I may consider doing that, but 
I try and keep honest with my videos. It's one of the reasons why I don't like a lot of editing. Last time, I had to lay on my back to get around to it, and I will try not to do that, because it's hard to get a good camera angle, but I don't think I'm going to get away without doing it. So, I will be around here, and hopefully, I'll be able to point out what I'm doing a little better. No, I can't see shit. Uh, not too dark. You ever have those videos where the guy's like, yeah, you just do it this way, and it's like all dark. Like, come on, dude. Apparently, I am that dude today. I'm going to pause, because in all honesty, it's the same thing as the other side. So you'll have to work it out on your own for a moment. All right, so that took me about two minutes. It was one of those things where if you... I don't know, unfortunately you've probably never spooled film, but you close your eyes and you don't even think about what you're doing and just let your hands do it. It works a lot better. And I couldn't talk while doing that, so that's where we're at. So I already have this compressed, as you saw me do a couple minutes ago. What we're going to do now is take the compression off. The cylinder will hold into its place. There, there we go. You didn't hear it go fwing and shoot out or anything because it held. And then we're just reassembling it. Now reassembly, as I tried to point out earlier, these... Oh, hell. And these little pieces here where we screw them in have a little rubber thing. And I'm just going to try and compress them right away by hand. Which, if you don't have hand strength, you may want to take... Is this clamp capable of doing that too? You can just do it with your clamp, actually. Might as well save my hands a little bit. Technically speaking, one of the other things I do with my time is art. Nope. Apparently, you're going to need bigger than this one, which I think that was a six or a five. They're usually even numbers, so I'd expect that being a six. You probably want an eight if you need to literally have help compressing this, but. <sighs> You want to try and make sure it's even. There we go. Nicely done. Well, that one just came out right with it. I wouldn't have gotten away with that one anyway. There we go. That'll make for some stiff gameplay today. <laughs> They'll go on a Fortnite. I've been targeting it up pretty bad. My teammates on the Royal Rumble must have been thinking, dude, seriously, do you have to do this? You just play on someone else's team, you idiot. You know. Because every once in a while, I try and win. <laughs> I hate it, you know. Come on. Do I have to have this guy on my team? And then they realize, oh my god, I'm that guy on the team today. Because I overdid my hands. But it happens. Come on. You know, let's give it a little slap and tickle. Of course, if what I'm hearing about... Ooh, there's a good important point to remember. Right here should be your brake line, if I can get it into an angle here. Sorry about it waving around. I had mine coiled around. Make sure you keep your brake line straight. If you notice, by the way, I've got debris and garbage on my face, which I don't normally sport. And honestly, make sure you have safety glasses if you don't have real ones. As a matter of fact, even on top of real ones, it might be advisable to wear your safety glasses. One of my favorite guys, I'm sure if you've seen him, you'll know where this is coming from. Safety is number one priority. If you know who that is, if you can get past my horrible accent, please, you know, write in the comments for those who can't get past how bad my accents really are sometimes. 
However, if you do like a good accent, occasionally I pull one out that's worth listening to, but mostly people slap me when I start. Okay, well that one's started, and the other one will fit. Let's see if I can find the other one. Oh, hey, there it is. So much fun. The weird thing is, again, it's a job that's best done without looking at it. You can feel your pieces going together. <laughs> Make sure it's in the right position, otherwise you're just trying to thread into nothing. <laughs> Not sure how many times. Of course, make sure she's turned around, that way your tightening is compared to loosening. And going up is tightening. Because you're on the other side, it's not lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. It goes the other way. So from here, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's just, you know, tighten everything down. Okay. Make it to finger tight first. That way it's even and you're not torquing the bottom bolt and possibly damaging thread work. That's why you do it across from each other or evenly tighten and then really tighten. And these are ones that you can add real torque to. You know, like your oil filter hand tightened will work. As a matter of fact, I had a car that used to heat up so much it baked the oil filter on it. I had to break the damn thing off. Even just hand tightened. This is not a hand tightened activity. This is, there's more pressure on this than most things should have on them. You would better make sure this is tight, tight, tight. The kind of tight you would want to date that tight. Thank you. Holy crap. Ah, there we go. Let go of her. She's mine. You let go of that. Another good use for the old rubber mallet. Again, I told you it's not just for clubbing children. But there we go. That is really there. All you have to do from this point is reassemble your car. If you notice, we got it done in under 30 minutes on each side. So if you have an hour and you need your brakes done, make sure, you know, make sure everyone's taken care of that needs to be taken care of. And you have an opportunity to clean up, which in my case might take a little bit longer. Easy job. Do it yourself. Thanks for watching, friends, and for those of you who are watching the game channel, goats out.